Now, fair Hippolyta, the nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days shall bring in a new moon, but, oh, methinks, how slow the soul of the moon wanes. She lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves in nights. Four nights will dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrate. Stir up the Athenian youth for marriage. <laughs> Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love doing thee injuries. But I shall wed thee in another plea. Pomp <coughs> with triumph and reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation to mind, with the complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child with cunning. Thou hast lynched my daughter's heart, and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, he is. But in this manner, one of your father's respect, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looks, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have a father's love, Demetrius. Let me of Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful, Lysander. <laughs> True. He hath my loves, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do and say unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. Demetrius, I love out to his head, made love to Neda's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devotely dotes. Dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I've heard as much. Come, Demetrius. <laughs> and come, Demetrius. I have some private schooling for you both. And come, Hippolyta. What cheer, my love? With duty and desire, we follow you. Come now, my love. Why is your cheek so big? Chance the rose is there to fade so fast. The like for want of rain, which I can well fatigue them from the tempests of mine eyes. The course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in blood. Oh, cross, too high to be enthralled, too low. Or else misgraphed in respect of years. Oh, spite, too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of merit. Oh, hell, to choose his love by another's eyes. Hear me, Hermia, if thou lovest me, and see aboard thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the woods, the league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitteth souls and prosperous loves, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever ever women spoke. In that, <laughs> in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Do you promise, love? Look, here comes Helena. God speed, fair Helena, whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again on say. Demetrius loves your fair, O oh, happy fair. O oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affections move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. <laughs> his, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine? <laughs> Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. 
To Athens' gates how we devised to steal. And to the woods, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were once to lie. Farewell, sweet pray, play fellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and the most cruel death of Pyramus and Bisbee. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth our actors by the scroll. Master, spread yourselves. <clears throat> Answer as I call you. <laughs> Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. And what is Pyramus? A lover? Or a tyrant, a lover who kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. <laughs> this was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows vendor. Here, Peter Woods. You must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, <laughs> hey, hey, let me not play a woman, for I have a beard coming. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney. Ah, Pyramus, lover dear, my Thisbe dear lady dear. No, no. Thank you, Pyramus, and please be Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin startling the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. You, Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snub the joiner. You, the lion's father. <laughs> and I hope there is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray, if it be, give it me. For I'm slow of study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. <laughs> Let me go fly too. I will roar, but I will do any man good to hear me roar. I will roar, that I will make the Duke say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! Roar! Roar! You can, roar. You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day. A most lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Very well. I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play in? Why, what you will. But, masters, here are your parts. And I am to request you, entreat you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town. There we will rehearse. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet! And there we will rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's oak we meet. Enough. Hold or cut both strings. <laughs> Stolen from Amazing King. 
She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child knight of his train to trace before his wild, but she perforce withholds the lovely boy. Crowns with flowers. It makes him all a joy. How can I mistake your shape and make him white? Or else you have asked for it in your spite? Cold love and good fellow. Are you not he who frames the maidens of the villagery? Are you not he? Thou speakest to right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. But room, fairy, here comes Oberon. Hear my mistress. Would that you were gone. And all met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy is skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Carry, rash wanton! Am I not thy lord? Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg of thee a little changeling boy to be my henchman. His mother was a votress of my order, but she, being mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake do I rear out the boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I shall spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. <sighs> Fetch me that flower. The herb I showed you once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, will make man or woman madly dope upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs> Fetch me that flower, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> but who comes here? I'm invisible. Now we'll overhear their conference. <laughs> I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where? is Lysander and fair Hermia. The one I'll stay, the other stayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen into the woods. Hence get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? For I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, the more I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave unworthy as I am to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit. For I am sick when I do look on and thee. And I am sick when I look not on thee. I will not say thy questions. Let me go. Or, if thou follow, do not believe but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. <laughs> Fare thee well, then. Ere thou do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Welcome, wanderer. Hast thou the flower there? Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious wood brine, with sweet musk roses and with eglin thyme. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. And effect it with some care that, she, that he may prove more fond upon her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me here again ere the first cock grow. Fear not, my lord, your servants shall do so. <laughs>
But thou seest, when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for its sake, be a dancer, cat, or bear, pard or boar with bristled hair, in thine eye that doth appear. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. <laughs> <laughs> with fear. 
every moment. Sun, and of course, your mind. Pyramus, you begin. Once you've spoken your speech, enter into that break. And so everyone, according to his cue. What hemp and homespun heavy swagger in here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A place more? I'll be up. An actor, too, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus, this be stand for it. <clears throat> this be the flowers of odious savors sweet. Odors. <laughs> odors. <laughs> savors sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Bisbee dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. <laughs> a stranger here must the hair play here. Must I speak then? I very must you, for you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he heard, and is to come again. O oh, Pyramus, most illy white of hue, of color like the red rose, on triumphant briar, as true as true as horse, that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at a ninny's tomb. Ninus's tomb. <laughs> Why, you must not speak that yet. For that you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tire. Uh, uh, as true as true as horse, that yet would never tire. If I were fair, this be I were only alive. <laughs> oh, monstrous. Oh, strange. We are haunted. Pray, masters. Pray, masters. Ah. I'll follow you. I'll lead you. Battle ground, through bogs, through bush, through brakes, through briars. Sometimes a horse shall be, sometimes a hound. A hog, a headless bear, sometimes a fire. And nay, in bark, in grunt, in roar, in burn. Like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire, every turn. This is a knavery of them to make me a fear. Oh, bottom, no horse change. What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? <laughs> <laughs> bless me, bottom, bless me. Thou art translated. <laughs> I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. <laughs> to fright me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will walk up and down here. And I will sing, so that they shall hear I am not afraid. <laughs> the boozle cock, so black of hue, with orange tawny bill. The throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? <laughs> the fish, <laughs> the sun, and the lark, the plain song of Bray, whose note full many a man doth mark, and dares not answer nay. <laughs> For indeed, why humor so foolish a bird? Why give a bird the lie that the bird cry cuckoo never so? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. My ear is much enamored of thy note, and so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> <laughs> Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. <laughs> and yet, to say the truth, Love and reason keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. Hee haw! <laughs> For if I have wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on me. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed. Betty! <laughs> And I, where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman, nod to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal! Hail! 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 Hail. <laughs> <laughs> By your worship's mercy, heartily, I beseech your worship's name. Copa. Peas blossom. Mustard seed. <laughs> Come, lead him to my bower. Tie up my lover's tongue, bring him silently. Starshine and bright above you, light breeze that seems to whisper I love you. I wonder if my queen be awaked, then what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity.
Welcome, Wonder. What late grow about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. Titania wicked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet watched the Athenian's eyes as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side. But when he waketh, before she must be I. Stand close. This is that same Athenian. This is the woman, but not just the man. Oh, why rebuke him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Oh, what? Out, dog, out, cur, thou drivest me past the bounds of man's patience. <laughs> There's no use following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while, I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast taken point and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. That the wood goes swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from Tartar's bow. <laughs> Flower of this purple dye, kick with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye, when his love he doth spy. When thou wakest, if he be by, Beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fair man, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook me pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at one through one. That must needs be quite alone. <laughs> and those things that do must please me that will fall for crossly. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her o'er? I had no judgment when to kill her, I swore. Or none in my mind. Now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and he you. <laughs> oh, Helen, God is nimble. <laughs> My love shall hair thine eye, crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow. Oh, spite, oh hell, I see you all are bent to sin against me for your merriment. Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls to mock me too. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. For you love Hermia. This you know I know. <laughs> Why, Sander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, found. My ear, I think it, brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doeth rest to go? <laughs> you speak not as you think, it cannot be. No, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false Sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spur me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious, celestial. I understand not what you mean by this. I do. Persevere, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back. But fare thee well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul. So, fear Helen. Excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot retreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she and she. Thy threats are no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. Thou say so, withdraw and threw it to. Quick, come! A fly, sir, there's my two tents open! Hang off, thou jack! Thou barred, wild thing, let loose, for I'm shaken from you like serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet? Out, loot medicine, out, oh, heated potion hands. Do you not jest? Yes, do, then so do you. Demetrius, I would keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll trust not your word. What? <laughs> Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? 
Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me. What news, my love? And not I, Hermia. Are not you, Lysander? Aye, by my life. And never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing through it. It's no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. <laughs> oh, me. You juggler, you came your blossom, you gave up love! What have you come by night and stolen my love's heart? Fire, fire, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet! Why so? Aye, that way goes the game. Her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? <laughs> How low am I, thou painted maypole? How, <laughs> How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach up to thy eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. You perhaps may think that because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower? Or Be not afraid. She shall not hurt thee, Elena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. When she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. Oh, she was a vixen when she went to school. And though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again? Nothing but low and little? Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus of pindering non-dressing, you beef, you acorn! You are too vicious in her behalf that scorns your services. Now she holds me not, now follow the dearest, to try who's right. Thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow, nay, I'll go with thee, cheat my travel! <laughs> you, mistress, all this coil is love of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer in your cursed company stay. Your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. <laughs> <laughs> I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still a mistake is just commit as thy knavery willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on? Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight! As I do thee in this plan employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. Then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace.
true delight in that former lady die, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sweet, smooth head, and kiss thy fair, large ears, my gentle joy. <laughs> Where is Peas Blossom? Betty. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. <laughs> Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Betty. Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur. Get you your weapons in your hand, and kill me in a red-hipped humblebee on the top of a thistle. And, good monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Where's moth and mustard seed? Ready. What's your will? Nothing, good monsieurs, but to help precocious peas blossom but to scratch. I must to the barber's monsieurs, for he thinks I am marvelously hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass. If my ears can but tickle me, I must scratch. Say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? I could munch your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Bud or Cupid's flower hath such floor, force and blessed power. Wake, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions I have seen. Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. <laughs> oh, how came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off his head. My fool's eyes peep. So, music. Take my hand, my queen, and let's rock up this ground upon which these sleepers be. Come, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Very king attended Mark, I do hear the morning lark. rare vision. <laughs> we thought I was. There is no man can say what we thought I was. We thought I was, and we thought I had. But man is a patched fool if he will offer to say what we thought I had. <laughs> But so 
soft. What nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep. This Lysander. This Demetrius is. This Helena. Old Nader's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. Lo, bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, friends. St. Valentine. Begin these wood birds for the couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes such gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy? Sleep thy feet and fear no enmity. My lord, I should reply amazedly, half asleep, half waking. But as yet I swear, can I truly say how I came to be here? I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would, Demetrius, thereby to defeat you and me, you of your wife, and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, my love to Hermia melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idol god. The object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena, to her, my lord, where I betrothed, there I saw Hermia. But like a sickness did I loathe this food. But, as in health, come to my natural taste. Now, do I love it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Gentle friends, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we shall hear more anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three and three, We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Are you sure that we are awake? <laughs> it seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. But he did bid us follow him to the temple. <clears throat> Why, then, we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. Something smoky, do something and right. The best kids told me what you did last night. Left me sleeping in my bed. Sweet bully bottom. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Bottom, almost courageous day, almost happy hour. <laughs> Masters, I am to discourse wonders to you, but ask me not what, for if I tell you I am no true Athenian, I will tell you it all as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined, and our play is preferred. Right. And, dearest actors, eat no onion nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet <laughs> No more words. Away, go, away! <laughs> <laughs> Supper and bedtime, if not with some delight. <laughs> Philostrate, what masks, what dances? How shall we beguile the lazy time? Great, Tony, Swartz, you're right. The choice of which her mind is supposed to be A brief, tedious scene of young Pyramus and his love, Thisbe, very tragical mirth. 
Brief and tedious, very and tragical. We shall hear this. <laughs> it is not for you. For I've heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world. We will hear this play. <laughs> Take your places, ladies. <laughs> Please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. <laughs> if we offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offense, but with good will, to show our simple skill. That is the true beginning of our end. Consider then, we come but in despite. We do, not, we do not come as minding to content you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here that you should hear repent you. The actors are at hand and by their show. You shall know all that you are like to know. <laughs> In the same interlude, it doth befall that I once now by name present a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and such a wall as I would have you think that in it had a cranny hole or chink through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often, very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall, the truth is so. And this the cranny is, right and sinister, to which the fearful lovers are to whisper. O oh, grim looked knight, O oh, knight with hues so black, O oh, knight, O oh, knight, alack, alack, alack. <laughs> I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, <laughs> that separates her father's grounds and mine. Thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thine shape to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Don't shield thee well for this. But what see I? No, this be do I see. O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceit me. <laughs> oh, well. How often hast thou heard my moans? How often my good friend has come out? My cheery lips often kiss thy stones. My stones with hair and mind it with a I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe? <laughs> I love thou art. I love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall! <laughs> <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, but not your lips at all! <laughs> Will thou meet me at Nitty's tomb straight away? Time hurts, time death, without delay. <laughs> <laughs> thus my part discharged so, and thus being done, wall away doth go. <laughs> Monstrous mouse that creeps on floor may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough and wild this rage doth roar. For now that I once snug the joiner am, a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. For if I should, as lion, come and strike into this place for pity on my life. This lantern doth the horn and moon present, myself the man of the moon doth seem to be. All that I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, this dog, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is old Louis too, but I don't see my love at all. <laughs> 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 oh, For thy sunny beams, I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. What dreadful doll is here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? What, thy mantle good? Stained with blood? 
come tears confound, outsword and wound the pap of Pyramus. I that left, left pap where heart doth hop.
now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, then to the best bride bed shall we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create, which forever shall be fortunate. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. <clears throat> Slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weekend night of 